You guys already got them lay all the way back. Just nice and comfortable. Start by taking a couple of really good deep breaths in. And out. Feel the body relaxing. season where we live because some days will be absolutely gorgeous, perfect, crystal clear, warm weather. And then the next day might be the craziest wind you've ever wind you've ever seen in your life. Or maybe just randomly a snowstorm comes through or whatever. And so sometimes internally it makes my emotional state just a little bit more kind of on edge to never know what the weather is going to bring. And I've noticed that if I'm not conscious of taking that extra breath before an action, sometimes I'm a little bit too reactionary where maybe I bring an energy that I didn't intend into conversations. And so um, kind of the purpose of class today is first of all, to do just a little bit of warming up uh, from this these colder days. It's a little bit of core for the beginning. And, um, and we'll be using that, uh, that warmth that, that we're building up within to then carry forward into some of the stretching that we're doing so that we get that extra moment to just pause and breathe before our actions. So it kind of sets up a habit for us that we can be extra aware of what it is that we're bringing to different scenarios for the situation, how our energy is, how our breath is. So just start off here with a huge inhale. A nice exhale. Just feel how that gets your body, your emotions excited and ready to go. So with that, let's begin to take the knees into the chest. And hand on each knee. Let's start off with gentle rocking for the low back and the hips. Almost like a soothing action. Tuning in already to how that feels. We'll let our right knee cross tightly over the left knee. Grab onto each ankle. And this is a moment just to take that pause, that breathing. I love this one for how it, it gets deep into some of those muscle connections around the hip area. So as much as possible, try to relax those areas. Good. And that relaxation comes with the breath. In and out. Awesome. Now you're okay. Two more cycles of breath, deep and full. And then we'll keep the legs crossed like this, taking a twist. So I personally like to bump the hips a little bit to the right before the knees fall to the left. So you might turn, return the left foot to the ground to help that bump, but ultimately knees fall to the left, the arms spread open. Enjoy the back muscles relaxing. Receiving this open-hearted expansion. Deep breath and a twist, give in the belly. Nice exhale. 
Good. I'm crossing the legs, the knees come back up, and make sure to recenter the hips. And then we cross left knee, tight through over, grab onto each ankle. Just pausing here. Getting this pattern set up for class. So I keep the breath flowing. It's a good pattern to think about because as we head in just a moment into a couple of core exercises, it's just that remembrance. Can I keep on breathing even when things do get a little more rough? A little more physically dynamic. for this spot. Have slumping hips to the left before the knees fall to the right. Spread the arms open, keeping the shoulders grounded. conscious of how deep in the belly we can breathe here. Loving how that gives us a little massage to the intestines. So two more breaths like that. So a second breath releases on cross leg, three center hips. We'll extend legs directly up to sky. The arms are also floating upward. This first one's just a nice simple crunch. We're trying to reach the fingers a little closer to toes and then return the shoulders down. Exhale, pulse, inhale. This so one's one that gets the higher part of the rectus abdominis. We'll make sure to include different parts of the abdominal area. It's five, four, three, two, one. Now it legs open out nice and wide. Arms reach up overhead, inhale. Exhale, the arms lift, the shoulders lift as much as possible. The legs, then return back down, inhale. Exhale, reach. Inhale. Take another 10. You can always take breaks if needed. Nine. relax open. Could choose to slide hands to the toes instead if that reach is not too much of a strain here. If the legs get tired because they've been here for a while, you could just let the knees bend almost like a frog pose instead. That's, that's acceptable. The inner thighs are still getting their stretch. Together. We're going to bump the thumbs under the hips. That just helps to keep the sacrum and the low back connected with the ground. So from here, we lower the legs down, maybe to a 45 degree angle or slightly further, and then return them back. 
Inhale. Exhale. Let's count another eight. I skip some of these. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Hands grab onto the right leg. Left leg covers down above the ground. And then we'll switch our straight legs. So grab on the left, lower right. And exhale, switch. by the hips. Let's take five bridge poses. So inhale, put the tailbone first and then rise up one vertebrae at a time. Exhale, return back down. Four. Three. Two. One. And we'll set up for a fish pose. So the hands are palm face down. You slide those right under the glutes. And then start to extend the legs straight forward. It's like a mini crunch to get the elbows under elbows planted. And then scoot the elbows as close together as you can. Heart lifts up. Front of head arches back. Opening. You can just rest on the ground unless you wish to add extra effort. Two more breaths. One. Tuck the chin in. Start to unwind the palms and just press your way directly up to sitting. And then leaning over, two straight legs. Well, how nice that is on the back area. It needs to be a little bent if it feels like the hips are pulling your spine back. How much can we release the weight of the head forward? So that the weight of the head starts to pull the back of the neck and the spine. So just a gentle stretch. sense of aliveness within. In yoga, they call that prana, that life force, that vitality. When we're drained, when our battery is drained, it's hard to make any decisions from a very conscious place. So having kind of topped it off a little bit better, here we can start those slow, deep breaths for a couple of Nice stretches here together. We'll stack spine back up here and transition to cobbler, bottoms of feet together, knees open. Doesn't have to be super close unless you like that spot. It's your preference today. And we'll start to tilt forward. Notice what quality the breath has taken on for this shape.
Lifting the spine up a bit. We're going to rotate the right leg back. So this is gonna be your preference. This is still early in class. You can either just keep this leg here and lean forward, or if you're ready to send the leg either partly back or all the way back to the then you can take that. Don't feel like you have to force it because it is early. So just if that seems like that would be okay. Either way, leaning forward nice and easy. Planting the hands, the right leg returns, perhaps to cross to plant on the outside of the left side. If that's not working, just plant on the inside. And we'll take a twist toward the front door. So left hand or left elbow hook around that right knee. Step the spine up, rotate around. Excellent. Notice where you're filling it. Perhaps sensation on IT band or hip, or spine. Practicing that consciousness, that awareness of what is the experience. Release. Rest the right leg in front. The left foot tucks stack. This can be partway here. It can be halfway. It can be all the way to pigeon you choose. Make sure you're on second side, whatever that is. Last deep inhale. Nice exhale. Good. Let the hands rest the right hip down. Left foot swings all the way around to try to plant on outer thigh area. Hook the right hand or the right elbow on that left knee. Lift the spine up. Inhale. Exhale twist. Legs around, going to kneel. If you ever need a blanket under your knees, that can be nice. But let's take a couple of cat cows. So spine rounds up, that's an exhale, belly down, gaze up. Take it at your own breath pace, a couple of good rounds.
So back to neutral spine. Start to spread the fingers firmly already, pressing down through the pads, every knuckle, every joint, so that way we're not jamming the wrist into the ground. And for a moment, we're trying to lift the knees just an inch or so above the ground. So from here, right knee tries to come closer to touch the right elbow, if possible, and the left. So a couple of those back and forth. We get a moment to create some heat. Notice the breath. Five, five, four, four, three, three, two, two, one, one. Straighten the legs, take it up to downward facing the dog, and add a little bit of movement if that feels nice for this version. Every finger, every joint, pushing down. Almost like we could lift the back of the wrist off the ground. But at some point when you're ready, we'll make our way up to the top of the mat for a nice forward fold. No rush to get there just when it's when you're ready, when it's nice. And again, maybe motion for this first one, or maybe stillness. Next inhale, we'll rise, circling up, slight back bend, and hands down to the heart. Keep the core zipped up, but the elbows open out. Heart pulls forward and through, chin lifts a little bit. Good. Touch the forearms together and push the shoulder blades back. Press more, open, inhale. Exhale. One more. Beautiful. Back to stacked spine. Right hand rests on right thigh. Left hand circles up and over. Rise. Switch it out. And rise. Big toes close, heels slightly separated. Sitting back to fierce pose. The knees never go forward of toes. The tailbone tucks just slightly under to protect the low back. Hands at the heart. Take a moment trying to lift heels off the ground. Feel how squeezing into the midline helps. Find that center. Next inhale. Exhale, the heels rest. We twist the front door. Just hooking the wrist for this first one. So left wrist hooks to right thigh. Right arm starts to twist up to sky. Twist to heart for an inhale. Exhale, switch sides. The wrist. Left hand floats. And hands to heart. Exhale, forward fold, jump hands down. Inhale, slide hands up, shins, a nice half lift. Exhale, hands return. Right foot slides back. Right hand plants on the floor, left hand twists up. And drops down. The back knee lowers. Then from there, we float the arms up to sky. Nice inhale. Exhale, pull the elbows back to the sides. Twice more, float the arms up, inhale. Exhale, open. Inhale. Exhale. Good. Dropping hands to floor, half split. The front leg straightens out. The hips are over the back knee. Just bow forward, getting into the hamstring.
this left knee comes back underneath us. We're either setting up in a kneeling plank or if you feel ready for a full plank, you can choose that instead. We're gonna slowly lower Chaturanga. So it's like a count of five if you can. I will squeeze in, lowering five, four, three, two, one. Extend the arms out to each side when you're on your belly. With our inhales, I'll show you when we're Floating the arms, lifting the legs, and, the, and then the arms shoot back, and then return back to that figure T <clears> in the side. So five of those. Inhale, lift, and sit back. Exhale, return. Four. Three. Two. One. And then one to either stay there or clasp hands and stay there. So inhale, prepare, and come back. One more inhale. Exhale, release hands. An easy sphinx. Let the chest be pulled through the center. Slight stretching for a core. The right shoulder, let the neck rotate. Knees over the left shoulder. Good, heading back to child pose. Welcome to skip the next thing if you'd like to just stay in child, but we'll come back up to that kneeling shape and do the knee touching the elbow five times each side if you'd like to take it. So hovering the knees, tapping five, five, four, four, three, three, two, two, one, one, downward facing dog. over toward the right outside edge of the foot. And walking over toward left. Back to center. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands to heart. Elbows open out. Three. And touch. Two. One. Big toes close, toes slightly separated. Putting back fierce. Hands at heart. Slight tailbone scoop under, maybe sinking just a little lower. The weight is a little further back in the foot, so toes could lift if needed. Beautiful. So we'll take a twist toward front door. You can either hook the wrist, or maybe some of us want to hook the left elbow to right thigh. Even elbow to the inner left thigh is kind of an intermediate option. Good. Exhale and switch. Mm 
Beautiful. Unwind hands to heart. Standing up, circle the arms to sky. And hands back to heart. Heels lift from here. And a balance. Lower heels down. Circle arms to sky. Inner inhale. Exhale, bow forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plant fingers. Send left foot back with mat. And then planting left hand, we're twisting right up to sky. down, the left knee lowers. We're sending ourselves, our weight up the hips forward. Again, make sure knee doesn't go past toes. And then rise up high. Sweep the arms up, inhale. So pull the elbows to the side. Heart through. Inhale. Another three. Two. One. Beautiful. Lower fingers to floor. Half split. The front leg scoots forward to be straight. And then just bow the chest over that front leg. We choose kneeling plank again, or maybe full plank, lifting the knees up. And then lower down chaturanga over five seconds. So I like to rock the shoulders forward at fingertips, and then squeeze the elbows in. Five, four, three, two, one. Rest belly down. So we'll do five of those figure T back to the lift. If you'd like to increase the challenge, the arms come any amount further forward up in your T. So maybe a Y or maybe all the way forward. So either way, that'll be where we start. Choose your starting spot. And then inhale, the arms swing back, the legs lift, look. Exhale. Four. Three. Two. One. Okay, options. Either hands at the sides, hands clasped, or hands grabbing feet. Choose your variation. With an inhale, we lift. The knees squeezing slightly in. One more inhale. Exhale, release, stack the palms and just rest the forehead on that for a moment. Alligator. Give yourself a chance to breathe the belly into the earth. It's almost like a little massage for the intestines. back to child. If you'd like a sphinx or a cobra first, you're welcome to take that first. And then heading back to child.
Whenever you're ready, downward facing dog. It'll be the same as before. You choose how long to be in the down dog until eventually you like the forward fold. You can just go straight there. You can pause for a couple of breaths. You're pacing. Next huge and hell will rise up to stand. And stand to heart. Three options. Option one, right knee floats. We're just practicing balance here. Option two, taking the twist, left hand to the outer right thigh. Option three, left hand to the outer right foot. So your, your variation, balancing or balance and twist. Breath in, out, torso forward, swing this leg back, warrior three, any variation arms, soft land, warrior one, inhale, exhale, pull the elbows at the side, heart forward and through, just swing. Passing hands together behind the back. Bow forward. Pull the arms away from the spine if you can. And as we release the hands, both hands come to the inside of the front foot. We counterbalance the fingertips walking forward to that top left right corner of that. We counterbalance that by sending the hips a little bit backwards. So it kind of pulls the spine straight and long. Continue to walk the fingertips all the way to face the long edge of the mat. The toes turn with us. Wide angle forward fold. Fingertips nice and far forward. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> underneath us for a second, deep bend the knees, and then roll the spine up. The front toes turn forward, top of mat, open the arms for triangle. So reach the left hand forward, this tilts the pelvis, and then just drop left hand to shin, right hand to spine. Try to keep the spine stacking, it's in flat as if a wall was behind you. Rising up with the torso, the front knee bends and straightens. Two, one, stay. Extended side angle. Rising up warrior two to reverse. Rising up, switch back to warrior one, square the hips forward, straighten the front leg, bring hands to the hips, and start to bend forward into the pyramid. Keep the hips square the whole time you're traveling forward, hands that ultimately rest on shin or floor. into a standing split from here. We need to bump the fingertips forward, float the right leg high. If you want to challenge the balance, maybe hands come a bit closer or even wrap around left heel. Yeah. Extended area. 
forward. We're going to transition down to sit from here. So the right knee comes to touch the outside of the left foot. And then you lower your hips back. Good. So it should be this left foot crossed over. So we'll take a twist from there. Right hand or right elbow hooks. Swing to back door. If anybody wants to try to get the right arm to cross into the knee, under knee space for a bind, you can play with that. Yeah, kind of a deep one. <laughs> Okay, you release, wide angle, the legs open out, walk in here to sit. Let's come in. Like swing all the way to back up mat. Up to downward facing dog or a flow if you'd like to add one in. And eventually heading up to top of mat. Next inhale to rise up. Comes down to heart. Option one, left knee floats. Option two, the knee twist. Option three, the foot twist. Wrestle forward, warrior three. Soft land warrior one, fingers float first. And then elbows hold to the sides, stay. So the chest open, heart, throat. And the hands behind in a clasp. Bow forward, shoulders stretch. Fingertips release, they find the inside of the front foot, they start to walk forward to top left corner of mat. The hips counterbalance and move backwards. And continue to walk fingertips to the long edge of mat, turn the toes. Maybe you like that almost like half downward facing dog version of wide angle, or maybe that's when you want to reach through the legs. Hands underneath shoulders briefly, bend the knees, roll the spine up. The front toes turn to the front of the mat. Open the arms, straight legs for a moment, triangle pose, reach the right hand forward, and then drop hand to shin, left to sky. So rises, front knee bends, warrior two, and straight, and two. This last one, stay, extended side angle, lean forward. Rising up, and then lean backward. Two, transition to warrior one, hips face back forward, and straighten front leg, hands to hips, pyramid, then you directly forward. Lower hands to shin or foot.
and then split the hands up forward, float the left leg high. Sometimes playing with balance is possible, no pressure. Good. Left knee is going to come to the outside of the right foot, and then lower the hips back to sit. So right leg is crossed over, hook the left hand or left elbow, straighten the spine up, inhale, exhale to rest. Be the bind if you played with that before. Inhale. Exhale. Release forward. Open legs wide angle. Walk forward and through. Trying to keep the big toe pointing upward as much as possible. Huge belly breath in. And out. And walk back in. Easy cross leg, full seated place. Clasping hands behind back. Shift the hands to right hip or right waist. And then right ear drops to right shoulder. Close up. Hands to left hip or left waist, and then left ear to left shoulder. Release, head rises. Practicing a box breathing. We'll inhale for a slow count of four, and hold for a count of four, exhale for a count of four, and then hold without air for now. So we'll do a couple of rounds of that. Ready to inhale now. One, two, three, four. Hold. Two, three, four. Exhale. Two, three, four. Hold. Two, three. Twice more. Inhale. Two, three, four. Hold. Two, three, four. Exhale. Two, three, four. Hold. Two, three, four. Inhale. Two, Three, four, hold, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four. Here we'll start to return back to any version of Shavasana or any last stretches our body needs. Listen to your body, tune in. If there's any movement that needs to feel complete today, take those. Otherwise, at any point that you're ready, any version of Shavasana will settle into that. So if you laying flat, you can do your legs up the wall. Absolutely anything that feels good for your body today.
natural for some of us to settle into that Shavasana shape sooner than others. So don't, just because I'm speaking, don't let that rush you. Take all the time you need. But eventually when you're in Shavasana, just simply consider how interconnected we all are. Like we know that a mother and a baby have a physical umbilical cord, but it's almost like once that's gone, there's still an energetic connection. And I feel like we have a deep energetic connection with especially the people we're close to, but even everybody else. And sometimes funny things happen, like if a, an angry driver passes us, sometimes we take on their anger, like this spike of a weird emotion that's maybe not ours. And sometimes that's wind and the cold can bring up in us. And so recognizing that we can use the breath at any point to slow down enough that we can be conscious of our next action and what energy that will pass forward. Recognizing that awareness, just get to rest with our breath for a couple of minutes now. Inhales and exhales. house introducing little movements back to the body fingers and toes ankles and wrists and then any movements that just feel good Eventually heading to a fetal position that feels good for the body today. Maybe 
maybe two or three breaths. Only rising up to a comfortable seated place when you feel it. with hands at our heart, we reconnect with our intention, recognizing the power of the pause, that moment to take an extra breath so that we have a conscious action rather than a reaction. So here together, we simply take a deep, full breath and out. With that pause to help lead us forward to the rest of this marvelous conscious day. We'll wrap up the time we shared together with the sound of oh, deep inhale now. Oh. May we be filled with light and happiness and peace. Namaste. Namaste.